Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Let's Plant Recap. This is the show where I look at your comments from the last episode and react to it. Now you might notice that it's dark and I'm doing another nightly recap. For the past recaps, I've usually been doing it at the same day, same day of the release, which is uh, in this case it's Saturday. It's Friday night at the moment, and I have to do this now because I don't think I might. I don't think I'll have the time, the free time to film tomorrow because we're celebrating Nikki's first birthday on Sunday. For Saturday, we'll be busy with preparing the place. As you can see, I've got stacks and stacks of chairs behind me. We've also got some tables outside, some folding tables, and we're going to start setting up tomorrow. Time really flies. Without further ado, let's have a look at the latest episode, and that's episode number 96, which is about Echeveria flower stalks, how to propagate with them, and why you need to chop them off. So it appears that this is quite a timely topic, quite a popular episode, I guess, because I've gotten lots of reactions, lots of views, and lots of comments for my based on my typical performance. And let's go through them now. First comment is from Lindsay Bringans. Chuck, thank you for this very informative video, learning heaps from them. I'm glad you found this very useful. I think, or at least I'd like to think that this is very timely, especially for us in the Southern Hemisphere. Because a lot of our Echeveria should be blooming by now. So yeah, timely advice. From Esther Higuera. You are so knowledgeable about plants. Great videos, really enjoy them. Keep up the great job. Thank you so much, Esther. And like Lindsay, I'm glad you found it useful. From D. Chin. Thanks. Those are great tips. I'm trying to root a few flower stalks right now. Fingers crossed for pops. Hey, good luck to you. And I hope that pops come out and not just more flowers. From Baby Allegrio. Thank you for sharing. May I know how do you water your beautiful garden? I know that uh, I'm due a video on watering. I've been promising it for quite a while now. I was supposed, I was thinking of working on it tomorrow, but like I said, I won't be having, I won't be able to have the time to work on any videos this weekend. So I'm hoping to be able to do it pretty soon, but don't hold your breath. From Nana Superhero. Wonderful. From Linda Leal. Lovely plants, beautiful garden, excellent information. You have taught me so much and my new plants are flourishing now. Thank you, Chuck. Great videos. I'm glad you found this useful as well. I I think I finally found the type of topics that I should be doing for my for my vlog. Although I might have to mix it up once in a while and focus on stuff about my garden. Right now I've been focusing on uh, tidbits, lessons, little lessons, mainly about propagation and yeah, mainly about propagation since it's still springtime. Coincidentally, tonight is the last official night of spring, our summer. In, in a few hours when midnight arrives, it would be the 1st of December here in Australia, which means that it's the official start of summer. I'm hoping that it does not get too hot too fast and so far we, so far we've been lucky as you can see I'm wearing a jacket right now looks like we're getting we're still getting cold nights so I hope this fast tracks my, the growth of my seedlings but you know I'll take whatever I can get from Oscar Roas this video was amazing those edits with the music and removing the flower stalks were too cool keep it up keep it up Chuck Thank you so much, Oscar. Um, yeah, I've been trying to mix it up a bit more now with my editing. Although you might notice that it's not consistent yet, I'm still finding, uh, experimenting with various stuff. So hopefully I'll get my formula down pat soon. But until then, expect a lot of random stuff coming up. From Clarissa Jaramillo. Thumbs up. Thank you. From Jeff. I don't know if you've been working on this, but I notice less edits in the commentary when you're looking at the camera. Smooth. Some do that so much, it really bothers me. I like how your methods and video features are developing and expanding. <laughs> yeah, like I mentioned to Jeff, I have been using a clever mix of B-rolls and zooms. Otherwise, I still do lots of uh, 
I still do lots of breaks, lots of lots of dead air, lots of cuts, and you'll notice this in this recap because I can't be bothered to uh, edit them properly. You know, I just remove the breaks and yeah, just leave it at that because it's a lot of effort for so little gain since not everyone watches the recap anyway. But yeah, f for those of you who are watching this right now, thank you so much. I uh, I really appreciate it because. You know, this is this is like the only time that we get to chat informally, if that makes sense. Anyway, next one from Karen Lottering. I cut off the flowers because, like you said, it looks messy, and I like my succulents as is. LOL. That and the pest problems. Ah, oh, so annoying. Yeah, exactly. I try to remove. I try to get ahead of the insects, especially now that it's summer. It's. It's according to the forecast, we're still not getting hot days, although it has been rather wild recently, you know. But at least for the past few weeks, we've been we've still been getting cold nights to offset the warm, the hot days. But I'm really dreading the time where we're going to get consecutive hot days and nights, and that's in the peak of summer. Down here in Melbourne, the hottest that it goes is usually. Or, or at least for the past few years that I've been actively, uh, at least for the past few years that I've been actively monitoring the temperatures, especially since I have my plants in the ground, the highest that I've experienced in this garden was about 44, 45 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure how much that is in Fahrenheit, maybe 120, somewhere there. So. I'll be working on my shade cloth, my shade structures pretty soon. Apart from that, I'll have to remove all, every single flower stalk that I can see because they are aphid and mealy magnets. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. I think I'm going to do that after the party. The birthday party happens this weekend and as soon as that's done, I might start setting up already. From Julie Dorling. Thanks for the information on what to do with the flower stalks, Chuck. My first succulent garden is coming along nicely. Hey, congrats! And could you share some photos? I'd like, I'd definitely like to see what you've got so far. From Aneta S. Can't wait to try this on my plants. First will be my Black Knight Echeveria, which is currently forming blooms. Yes, we have almost winter here, and she's at the end of forming blooms. How weird! Very informative videos always. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah, at least you're heading to winter, which means that there's not much of the insects to come around, except maybe a few aphids, but they're not as active when it's cold. So, yeah, in a way, I envy you, but I like how my plants are growing right now. They're growing pretty fast, so, so I don't think I'd like to trade places just yet. I might change my mind once we're in the heat of summer, though. <laughs> From Birdwatch. I just found your channel tonight and I really love it. Thank you for touching on pseudo dormancy. I live, I live in the Philippines so I always feel a little lost when people talk about the four seasons in relation to the plants since it does not apply to my country. Yeah, I feel for you man because I agree with you there's lots of resource. most of the resources online talk about uh, temperate climates or you know, climates in the extreme latitudes. Not much, there doesn't seem to be much vlogs or guides online about the tropics, except maybe a few obscure ones and usually just in small Facebook groups or pages, you know. I'm just doing my part, especially being a Filipino myself. So I'd like you guys in the Philippines to feel that I've got your back. Not always, but I'll do my best to consider all climates, a universal climate, a universal tip for all climates in my guides and I might have to do, I might have to mention caveats depending on the climate, you know, but yeah, I'd like to be able to cover everything, especially since as you say, information is sparse for the tropics, so yeah, we'll get there. <coughs> From Fab911. Very interesting information about why echeveras are open or not, but I've heard something different, that echeveras are closing up because of the lack of water. What do you think about that? And he references Chopsticks and Succulent Channel. Hi Theresa, 
Hope you hope you will understand what I mean. Take take care. So I responded to this question, and here's what I said. It's pretty much the same thing. That's what I implied by my explanation. In summer, by protecting the inner growth, this means that there's less surface area exposed to the sun. This also means that there are fewer areas for water to escape from via evaporation. When dehydrated, they're trying to prevent additional loss of water. So close up and prevent uh, more evaporation from happening. Apart from that, the leaves are more floppy and curl anyway when there's not enough water pressure inside the leaves. So, so that's pretty much it. From Daniel Dalmonte. I like this video. You are very passionate in succulents, but the white rocks are a punch in the eye. <laughs> yeah, are they too bright? I guess it's just the lighting because I film during the day. I do like the contrast though because I use a lot of uh, volcanic rocks, the, the large rocks as borders, and they are dark. So I like I like contrasting them against white pebbles. And I think white pebbles for my footpath looks clean. I don't know. It's it's just a it's a personal it's a personal preference. It's a design decision. And those rocks are cheap. <laughs> and by cheap I mean free. I got it for free thanks to SoilWorks. And finally from Daryl Barnett. This was your best video yet. I didn't know you could propagate from flower stalks like that. You explained the process well and it all makes sense to me now. I've been following your videos since your early ones and I have, and I have learned heaps from you. I live in New South Wales and relate to all your Bunnings materials. I've been Bunnings free for 4 days now, but I don't think I can hold out much longer. <laughs> yeah, I try my best not to head into the garden section whenever I go to Bunnings, but I know it's a losing battle because it has gotten to the point where I get a guilty, guilty face, guilty pang whenever my wife says to grab me something the next time you're in Bunnings, which implies that I'm always at Bunnings. So maybe I should cut down on the trips. And those are all of the comments on the YouTube video. Let me have a look on Facebook. I'm not expecting a lot of comments on Facebook because I accidentally uploaded it pretty late. I think I uploaded it yesterday or a couple days ago. So there should not be a lot of comments here anyway. But let's see. Alright, I see a couple of comments. First one is from Gary and Rose. As always, Chuck, very informative. Totally agree with you in regards to flower stalks looking messy. I've cut I've actually cut most of mine off and used the larger leaves for propagation, striking most of them. Ever since you mentioned flowers can attract bugs and can lead to mealies, I've been cautious checking them every day just in case. Spray at the ready. Yeah, good call Rose and especially now that we're heading into summer, it's going to be summer in a few hours and yeah, it's, it's great being able to keep on top of things especially when it comes to insects and pesticides. So yeah. And finally, last call from Jacqueline Martin, thank you. You're welcome. Apart from this recap, I, I was hoping to be able to do a, an update on my seedlings, but I didn't get the time to film anything today, earlier in the afternoon. Because unfortunately, Zach, my son, he has been sick for almost a week now. I think he has the flu. We're taking turns watching over him because he refuses being alone. And right now, we're making sure, we're ensuring that he gets lots of fluids and rest. So that explains why you haven't been seeing him in any of my recent videos. I'm hoping he gets well soon, but in any case, he's getting all of the rest that he needs. I was hoping to do another update on my seedlings. Actually, the seedlings are behind the camera. I have the camera mounted on a small tripod. Let me show you. There. There. It has only been a few days since my last update on it, but I can't wait to show you yet another update because my second mini greenhouse has lots of germination now. And if you recall, the second greenhouse contained all of the seeds that were a result of my own, my hand pollination, my manual pollination. So it looks like I'm having better success with my own hybrids compared to those that I only harvested from the plants. I'm really hoping that I manage to keep them alive throughout summer, especially since it's going to be too hot by the mid of summer. One of the worst things to happen to seedlings would be them drying out quickly. So yeah, I have to be very careful from here on out. And also seeing that we would be quite busy this weekend, this Sunday, since the birthday celebration is on Sunday. 
I might not be able to join you in the premiere so I think I'll just do a normal upload to I would not I would not activate the premiere and instead just have it scheduled to upload at the same time the time that my premiere usually comes out that would be Sunday at 11 a.m. my time that would be Saturday evening on the other side of the world in the USA so yeah watch out for it and here's a preview of the next episode I've just arrived the buildings right here and you might find it familiar because this was the same venue for the succulent show last month That's right, in the next episode, I'm in a society now. So for those of you who are on the fence thinking about whether you would want to join a society, your local succulent society, this might convince you or not. Either way, I would recommend that you watch it just to see what you would get out of it or at least what you would get out of the Cactus and Succulent Society of Australia. I would imagine that the societies in your country would be the same. So at least you get an idea more or less. Alright, I think that's it for the recap. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.